Today, U.S. lawmakers debated how to fight terrorism and extremism in the military, and there was virtually no agreement on what the definition of the word extremism even means. Mike Gooding has the highlights from Capitol Hill. 37 of the 312 rioters arrested in the January 6th Capitol insurrection were current or former members of the U.S. military, including a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and an active Virginia National Guard soldier. A Pentagon report released earlier this month said domestic extremist groups pose a serious threat to the military by seeking to recruit service members into their ranks and in some cases joining the military to acquire combat experience. This is not a new problem. SPLC has been documenting white supremacist infiltration of the military and urging officials to take action since 1986. The House Armed Services Committee on Wednesday held its first hearing examining extremism in the armed forces. You pledge an oath to the Constitution and to these laws. They must be upheld and you must respect them in order to adequately serve within the military. Um, and we, we have seen a rise of people who don't believe that way. And it can have a very corrosive effect. And we want to make sure that we, we address this and nip it in the bud uh, so that it doesn't spread or corrode further. But Republicans on the panel pushed back. Where is the data and evidence that suggests that extremism in any form is rampant, major, and systemic? And it's a problem in our services. It's also important to point out that we lack any concrete evidence that violent extremism is a, as rife in the military as some commentators claim. The hearing came as the armed forces are completing a 60-day stand-down ordered by Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin to address extremism. Mike Gooding, 13 News Now. And Pentagon spokesman John Kirby says Defense Secretary Austin is looking at everything from recruiting to training to leadership when it comes to how the military deals with extremism going forward.